Outside of Toronto, besides me? All right. All people. Anyone else from the States? No? Yes? Okay, cool. Cool. Um, so, my name is Andrew Hepling. I, uh, I live in New York. I work for a company in Seattle called File on Q. I build mobile apps for police departments and first responders using .NET technologies and Xamarin. We were, we were having fun in the last talk about some old technologies. I integrate Xamarin with stuff like WCF and Visual Basic Code. It's, it's a lot of fun trying to get the two technologies to play together. And I mean that, honestly, it is a lot of fun being able to do some of that stuff. So, uh, I've been I've been around the block in the .NET ecosystem quite a bit. Uh, last night with the speakers, I was talking about people, how I contribute to .NET and Nuke, and that's a blast in the past. So I, I still do web forms development. I've done a lot of Azure stuff. I've done WPF, WinForms, ASP.NET Core. And it's it's been fun seeing the different things that you can do with the technologies and trying to bring them to, to the other platforms. Uh, I do a lot of open source development. Uh, this year I got uh, invited to join Planet of Xamarin community office. So I got a blog development blog. If you see it, I talk a lot about Xamarin and other .NET stuff. Uh, uh, the last talk, I'm going to poke fun at Alan. He was saying about how he loves iOS so much. I love Android. I love how you can do whatever you want in it. And I'm just, I'm just okay at iOS. I get by. I do what I need to do to get stuff done in that. Um, but enough about me. I want to talk to you guys about uh, customizing shell tabs in Xamarin. Now, uh, shell came out in Xamarin Forms 4.0. Who has heard of shell? Quick raise of hands. So raise them high, raise them high. I want to make sure. OK. Who has used shell in an app? No one? OK. So we're going to do a quick crash, crash course on Shell before we uh, get any further. So what is Xamarin Shell? It is a new way to build apps using Xamarin Forms. Uh, has anyone built a, a Xamarin Forms app where they needed to build like a, a flyout control or using like master detail or use uh, tabs? Who, who's had to do that before? That's a pain, isn't it? All right? Shell simplifies that. And I really love... Um, I've been using Shell, and it actually kind of worked out for me. Shell came out, and I started working on a new project. I'm like, let's use Shell. Let's, let's go. And Shell really simplifies building your dashboards. And I really found it easy to say, I want tabs, I want flyout, and I want to, I want to, work, I want to worry about my business rules. And that's, that's the beauty of Shell. Um, so for those that don't know what Shell is and have never seen it, I want to do a little crash course before we get into the code demo, because this is all about Shell. But like I said earlier, I want to show you how to customize your tabs in Xamarin Shell. So this is just your standard app XAML page, and we have our main page. We use that in every single Xamarin Forms app. Uh, for Shell, instead of saying, you know, new main page or navigation page, you say app shell. And that, that gets all of your shell code started. So this would be your, your app shell XAML. It's a little different than a content page, but, but not really. The only thing that is different is we have a shell here. We have a shell here. So the new class that they provided. And you just, you're just writing markup at this point. So what does um, a tab layout look like in Xamarin Shell? So this is what it would look like. Uh, we have a new type of control called tab bar, and then you can start creating tabs in it and specifying, okay, I got a browse tab, and here's the image I want to use, and I got an about tab, and here's the image I want to use. And that's all the code you need, and it's going to render two tabs on your page. This is the exact same code that you're going to see in the uh, Xamarin Shell template. That you, so if you have a file new project, Xamarin Shell, exact same code. Uh, how do we wire up our pages for Shell? So we, uh, we pull in our views in this uh, uh, XML namespace, and we just say for our content template, I want to use an about page when they click the about tab. I want to use the, uh, the items page when they click the browse tab. So creating stuff's a little bit different, but 
I find this index very easy because now when we when we finish this code, now what does it look like in our actual app? These, this is running on iOS, Android, and that's all the code you need to build this tab bar here and this tab bar here. And the nice thing with Shell is it gives you a lot of hooks to customize the colors. And so if I want you know, the tint color instead of being blue there, I want it to be purple. I can easily change that. I can change the background colors. It's, a lot, it's really flexible. The problem I found with is what if I want to go outside the bounds of just having this rectangle bar and icons in it? And that's what we're going to talk about with customizing Xamarin Shell. So the good, the not so good about using it. These are my opinions. Everyone got an opinion here. So they might be different. Uh, went too far. So with Shell, I found it really, really easy to build dashboards. Like I just showed in the code, it's just a couple lines of code, and I got tabs. I wired it up to my pages, and and we're off to the race as we go. It's really, it's really easy to to set up your app. Uh, I remember on many projects I've worked before with setting up a master detail or tab pages. I spent a week just getting the stack ready before I could start working on my pages. Who, who, who's gone through that before? It seems to smile and laugh. Yeah, we've all kind of fought through that before. Um, so I, I like that stuff about Shell. One of the things, but stuff that is not so good is I found it really hard to customize. So one of the things that we're going to go over is uh, I, I don't have an image right here, but we'll look at it later. Like, you ever use an app where you got like a giant add button on your tab bar? It's, it's pretty common design. Like, if you use like the clock app on your Android phone, you got a giant start button at the bottom. You, you can't really do that very easily in Shell. And it was a lot different to customize than building a custom renderer. And the other problem I ran into is uh, if you've spent so much time learning how you know, Xamarin iOS and Xamarin Android, sorry for the of two UWP people in the room, but uh, if you spent all this time, Shell doesn't work for that yet. There's a pull request out there. Hopefully they'll get merged later this year. Uh, but for Android and iOS, I spent a lot of time learning how those platforms work. And now I've got to learn all this new code of how Shell works and how I can hook into and customize it. And that's what we're going to learn today is how we can customize that stuff. But before we get there, I want to talk a little bit more about custom renders. So that's how, so when we customize Shell, it's just building another custom render. Quick show, this is really interactive here if you didn't figure that out yet. Who's built a custom render before? All right, so about half of you guys. All right, so Xamarin Shell is just another, it's just another custom render, but there's extra steps with it. So let's uh, look at a traditional custom render. So when you build a custom render, and I'm just going to use you know, the Xamarin label control that we all use in every single app. So we have our shared code. There's going to be a label control. It might have text, color, background color, whatever properties you want to do with that. There's going to be a, a label render in the Android code base. And there's going to be a label render in the iOS code base. And then what's actually happening, if you look at the implementations, is on Android, it's going to use a text view, and on iOS, it's going to use a UI label. But our shared code, all the way over here, all we do is this. And then when the Android code runs, it knows, oh, we're a label render. Okay, we got to go use our text view, and it renders it onto the screen. So how does this work with Shell? I said earlier, really, there's more steps, right? Uh, we got a diagram we're going to go over in a minute. So, these are all of the shell renders for Android. There's a lot there. Don't get overwhelmed by it. And we're going to make this code, the live code demo is going to be real easy. But we're going to be worrying about the shell item render. And for iOS, there's different renderers. And they have different names. Some of them are similar, but they are different. So we got we to gotta know where we're going. And for this one, we're going to be using that uh, the safe shell nav bar appearance tracker. That's, that's a mouthful, but it's really not that scary. So this was the renderer workflow we were just looking at for labels, right? So how does this work for Shell? So we have our, our shared Shell control. So when we look at what the app Shell was uh, just a few minutes ago, that's that Shell control right there. It breaks down into a Shell renderer and a Shell renderer for iOS and Android. So not, not too different than a custom renderer. This is where it starts to get a little scary. We'll walk through it all in a minute. So on Android, there might be a shell item renderer, and there might be a shell flyout, 
and you saw that big list of renderers I showed you a second ago, all of those are orchestrated by the shell renderer for Android. So they have all these different renderers that are controlled by the shell renderer. So what, um, the way you build it is you build your own shell renderer and then you orchestrate which individual renderers you want to use for the different parts of the shell that you want to extend. Same thing happens on iOS and then these renderers will then create the native controls. So they added extra steps because this is a large abstraction layer that's sitting on top of your native code and they wanted a way where I can say, I want to use everything from shell, but all I care about is I want my own fly. I don't want to use a shell fly. -up. So we can still use everything from shell and I'll just change this code right here. And that's why they've added these, these extra steps. So, how, how would you actually implement this? And I'll, I'll show you some code snippets first, and then we'll get into a code demo, and we'll build an app together. So the, uh, in the shell renderer code, there's going to be um, a method in there called create shell item renderer. So as I mentioned earlier for Android, we're going to be focused on the shell item renderer. So all you do to create your custom renderer to change how those tab items are, are generated on the screen is I just create my own shell item render and I say I override the method and I say use mine don't use theirs so what's important about this is if you've built a custom render there's that really crazy syntax you put above the class that says export renderer and you say you know, like type of label label render you don't do that for the particular shell items um, you do that for the parent level shell render so these guys here you would export your render but these ones here, you do not. You just new it up. Uh, so this is an example of what our shell renderer code would look like. So uh, this is actually code I pulled from an app I've been working on. I had to customize how the flyout worked, and I had to customize how the, the shell item worked, which is that tab bar and stuff that we're going to be doing today. And all, all I did here was... I overrode the methods and said, I want to use my version. I don't want to use the Xamarin method. But we still use the base class of shell render provided by Xamarin, and that gets us access to all of the other renderers there. So I'd say, I want to use my version. All right, so let's do a code demo that I'm going to stumble through, and it'll be fun. All right, so let's make this a little bigger. Can everyone see that on the screen okay, or do I need to make that font a little bit bigger? I heard it looks good from the back, so that's good for me. All right. Oh no, that looks really funky blown up. We'll, we'll see how that works. Let's see. Of course, it's zoomed in there. Yes. Shell already part of Xamarin, or is that? Uh, yeah, so Shell came out in Xamarin Forms 4.0. Oh, okay. So right now they just released Xamarin Forms 4.2, so you can use it today. It's a new feature, so uh, take that for what it is. If you're, they're, they're still doing a lot of work to improve it, but it is released as generally available and production ready. Well, I am going to restart that. We might start with iOS first. Let's just try it. Also, I develop on a Windows machine. I'm using a Mac for this demo, so you guys can see iOS. I, I'm, I'm just out for, for a good time here. <laughs> All right, let's make that big. Perfect. Okay. Uh, bring this over. Okay. So I took the the standard template that we get with uh, with Xamarin Shell, and I I made a couple small changes to it. I added a new tab down here called Add Button. I want this to be like that big, nice and big. I want it to overlap over the tab bar because that, that looks cool. It's a good design. Um, and so that's what we're going to do today. And you, you can't do that out of the box. So right now, if we look at our code here, let me stop the We could ignore this because we don't care about the styles. So this is what our code looks like, right? So we have three tabs. We have our browse, I added the new item, and we got an about there, okay? So with anything that you do for a custom renderer, 
you start creating your new shared controls first. Well, that's, that's how I do it. That's what I recommend. So what we're going to do is, and I, I know that's, that's really tiny over there, that's okay. but we're just going to create a new folder in here, and I'm just going to call it controls. And inside here, I'll just create a new class. We'll call it my tab bot. Perfect. I don't need a constructor. Uh, and I'm just going to have this inherit from the existing tab bar that comes from Michelle. And we'll include a namespace there. Perfect. So now I can go back to our, our app shell. And I can just update the tab bar here to use my tab bar. So we'll just say XML namespace, say C. And I'll just plug in my namespace. That's not what I want. See, on Windows, that just works for me. And now everyone that uses the Mac is just saying, you're doing it wrong. It's okay. Oh, you see, you see, well, why did it do that? Okay. Watch me struggle with Mac. All right, so I'll just come over here and I'll say, see, see, see. This is going to be the demo. I'm just going to be struggling type. All right. So we updated it to my tab bar. Uh, so yeah, C colon my tab bar, my tab bar, perfect. It inherits from tab bar, so this shouldn't be a surprise to anyone. I should be able to run this. It'll work. Fingers crossed. All right, it's building. Perfect. I didn't break anything, I don't think. All right, cool. All right, get worried. Um, so that's really not doing anything cool. So we need to add another control. So I said that we want this to be large. So why don't we create a control called a large tab? So I'm going to do just that. And it will be control. And we'll call it a large tab. And this is going to extend tab. Read that, fix my spacing. All right, so if we hop back over to App Shell, we see our tab. It's got a title. It's got an icon. So I don't need those properties. It's, it already knows how to handle those. But I want, um, I want it to handle the page loading a little bit differently than the way Xamarin Shell does. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a content page here. And we're just going to call it page. And so now I have, we got a large tab defined, it inherits from tab, and it's got a page. So I can head back over to my tab, or my tab bar, and I can create a large tab on it. And we're just going to call it large tab. And we'll do it together, and et cetera. Perfect. So now, back at our app shell, I can go and define our, our large tab. So. We only want one large tab. We know that with this customized shell, that our, our shell tab bar we're building, the large tab will always be centered and it will always be a large icon. So I can come here and say on my tab bar, uh, there's a large tab property and my IntelliSense is not working, of course. And that is going to be of type the large tab, which is going to have a title. I promise this code works. I wrote this just a really good thing. Uh, so I'm just going to copy and paste because that's what all good developers do is they copy and paste everything, right? All right. Uh, no, no, because we're going to add some stuff inside of it. So inside of it, there's a page property. So I can do C large tab dot page. And we have access to our to all of our pages through this local uh, namespace. So I can just go local colon. We'll say about page. We could create another page. We'll do that, we'll do that later if we have time. There's, there's a lot of code I need to get to. We don't have a lot of time. So that should work. Let's hope. 
If not, I got code written down that we can plug in. And, but this isn't going to do anything. So I just want to run it and make sure that that compiles correctly, that the XAML doesn't, doesn't barf at me. That's, that's my fear. And we should be back to two tabs. You haven't set the hot reload. What? You haven't set the hot reload. Um, I'm not using hot reload here because we're going to be writing C sharp for the rest of the demo. And hot reload doesn't work for C sharp. All right. So we're back to two tabs. That makes sense. We've just we created our created a special tab bar that we're going to customize, and we've created our special large tab that we're going to customize. Uh, I, I like Android. Uh, who who here is a big Android user? Who hates building custom renders for Android? Raise your hand. I hate it too. It's a nightmare. But it lets you do everything, but it's, it, it's a nightmare. The, the iOS code for this is so much easier. So we're going to do Android first. So uh, we're going to head over to the platform code over here. And whenever I build custom renderers, I start by just creating a folder in here called renderers. So we're going to do that. And Earlier I said everything kind of pipes through the shell renderer. So we're going to create a shell renderer to orchestrate our custom tabs. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a new file in here and we're going to call it my shell renderer. And this is going to inherit shell render. And we got to update our namespaces. I think we got to generate a constructor. We don't want our name. Yeah, context. Alan was saying that last last one. It's, it's everywhere. It's great. Um, what else we got to do? We got to export our renderer. So you do like assembly, export renderer, and say, what's our shared control? Shell, and type of my shell render. Going to Droid, perfect. All right. So this is how you'd write your, any of your custom renders, but for Shell, this is how we orchestrate everything. So now, what this code up here at the top is doing is it's telling the platform, hey, we got a Shell type, so our page is using Shell. I don't want to use a Microsoft one. I want to use our one called My Shell Render. So it's going to load that in, and now we can start doing whatever we want to Shell. So if, if you go and actually look at the GitHub repository and look at how shell render is implemented, they have all these methods that say, create this, create that. And all it does, it says new shell item render, new whatever render. And there's no additional exports that you have to do. They just, they just new it up. So that's what we're going to do here. I'm going to say override, uh, what did I say? Shell item render. And instead of calling the base implementation, we're going to call our own implementation. So let's go create that. I'll say new file. And I'll say my shell item render. And this is going to extend the shell item render. Uh, there we go. I think there's a constructor I got to use here. Something about the context. Let's see. Shell context, not the Android context. This is different. So let's go back to our uh, it's lagging on me. That's not a good sign. Demos. All right. So I said we just knew it up, right? So I'm going to say new my shell item render, and we're, I'm going to plug in this. So the shell render. If I haven't tried this on Mac, but I should be able to go with F12 into this, right? Is that a thing? Oh, no. I lost it. <laughs> Let's just load that back up. I'm not going to do that again, but... Um, <laughs> So if you if you look at the implementation of shell render, it implements I shell context. So it provides some methods for you that um, you can use in your individual references. And uh, I know David earlier was talking about Flash and an action script and all that cool stuff. It reminds me of when I was working on that stuff, and you would just pass your parent class everywhere, and it, it was great. So um, we're just gonna use the original file here. 
And so that's what that's what's happening with that I shell context. So we'll just we just got to start over here and say shell item render. Gotta remember to save often. And constructor. Okay, so shell context, right? So we said on our our shell item render. Uh, load from save. Perfect. Okay. So we're gonna pass in our current instance of the shell render. That's gonna give give us a context. When we head over to our actual item render, that's going to get passed in, and we're going to have our base code. So we've just written a lot of code. Any questions so far? No? No? Okay, cool. We'll keep going. So who here has written a, you know, an Android XML layout before? Some hand flashes? All right. They're, they're annoying, aren't they? I don't like writing them, but they're, they're a necessary evil. You do a lot of cool stuff with them. Uh, so in the platform code, to render out the, the entire layout that you see, there, um, especially for the tab bar, there's something called the, uh, the bottom tab bar. Uh, I forgot the exact, I got it written down for, for the demo. But there's this, this, there's this XML layout that you use for that. And what you can do is you can write your own and then and call the exact same thing and it will load your version instead of the, the platform version. So it, I guess it would be considered similar to like a bait and switch, I guess. It's, I, I want to use mine, and as long as the IDs are the same, it's going to overwrite what the Xamarin platform provides. So that's exactly what we're going to do. And lucky for us, I already wrote the code for it, so I'm just going to pull it up real quick. And it's the bottom tab bar of layout. So we'll just go add that in. So where do we add that in? There's this great, uh, not render, resources folder, and inside there there's layouts, right? So, oh, look at that, I already added it in. I forgot to delete that for the demo. So I don't need to copy it over. Perfect. So let's look at this real quick. Okay. So this is slightly modified from what you get in uh, Xamarin Form Shell. So the part that is in Xamarin Form Shell is, is this part right here. The part I added was this one right here. And so what I did was I wrapped everything in a frame layout, and then I took the existing layout, which was a linear layout, and I just put that as the first element, and then I said, I want my own frame layout, so I can do whatever I want to it. I can move it around on the screen, I can put anything in it, I can put buttons, I can put animations, doesn't matter. I got, I got a place to put stuff in. And that was the whole point of overriding uh, this layout control. So now that we have that in place, I can, I can start doing everything I need to do. So... Let's head back to our shell item render. So there is a class here uh, uh, called uh, create view, I believe. I don't want caps lock. So look for create on create view. Okay. So this is going to generate our entire layout structure. I don't really want any of the, the platform code to change. So I still want that method to run first. So I'm going to say var layout. Equals that. So that's going to run. It's going to do everything it needs to do. It's going to generate the layout that we just saw. And now I can go and use that to look up other stuff. And I will not remember that code. And this is not a memorization quiz for me. So I'm just going to pull the code out. And what else did I have there? I have these two guys. All right. So we have the frame layout that we saw on the other screen. Include my namespaces and the, the the bottom view there. So it, uh, the the bottom view is the actual tab bar itself. The what I'm calling shell overlay is what we want where we want that giant button to be. So now I'm still doing everything the shell does. I've got my my objects all created and I'm ready to go and actually build up our or giant button that we're going to render on the screen. And I got this named wrong, so i fix that real quick. All right, so we're going to have to create a new method down here. And I've done the hard work already, so if we're going to cheat a little bit more. And I'm going to go through all this code line by line. And feel free to ask questions on it. Okay. So I need to add a couple more objects then first. What can I miss? Missing our image button. Let's go 
go to those in at the top. The March tab that we created earlier. Okay. And I need a bitmap too. That should be the right one. Drawables. And I think we need Okay, cool. So but, did I forget a semicolon somewhere? Large tab. Oh, totally did. Thank you. <laughs> it's just like I'm on Twitch right now. I'm like, oh, what did I forget? We're not going to build it yet. We're going to talk about it first. So let's talk about it. So up at the top here, we, um, our render is going to have a shell item already. So let's just grab it. Earlier, we said it's a, my, it's a my tab bar. So we know it's a my tab bar. So let's cast it. And that gives us access to our large tab. And let's just go store that in a variable so we can use it. So up here, pretty simple. Um, next thing we got to do is we got to build our frame layout. So we're going to swap out the current frame layout that's been generated. We're going to build our own dynamically. And we got to pass the context because that's what you do in Android. And from there, I say I got an icon inside of our large tab. Let's go grab it. Let's go uh, convert it to what Android expects. So that's a bitmap right here. So this is some code that I used to take the image source and convert it to uh, an icon that bitmap can actually load. Uh, there's going to be a full code sample with this, and I'll have the uh, necessary code with that. Not so much important about customizing, but I wanted to mention that this is some custom code that I had to write for this. Uh, and then from there, we, we got our Android image that, or bitmap that we need to go and do something with. So I wanted to create an image book because we need something that can actually handle a click event. So we start building that up, and we take the bitmap that we created up there, and we plug that in, and do some styling. I want to make sure things look pretty. Uh, if you've used an image button in Android, there's a lot of padding in it, and it's, again, we can do so much cool stuff, and it's, it sometimes it's headaches. Uh, so make sure that stuff's invisible, and make sure we add it, and we crop it so there's no... We can make the, the image button as big as we want. And the big thing that we need to do is we need to add our event handler. So when it clicks, we want to do a thing. So let's go and create that. Uh, method. Perfect. Perfect. Okay. So from there, we're going to take this whole image button and events that we created, and we're we're going to add it from to our to our layout. And do some styling. I want to I want to move the layout of that entire frame layout. I want it to be covering half of the tab bar and half of the content view. So it's it's nice and big. Overlays a little bit of the content page. Uh, and to do that, to to get the measurements for that, you have to because um, our view is not rendered yet. So you're not gonna, so if you went and said, give me the the height of our bottom view. So the bottom view that we said earlier. Let's go back up. This is our bottom view, so this is the actual tab bar that's built. Uh, the height of that is not, it's going to be zero. It's not, it's not measured yet because it's not rendered. So uh, we use this measure function here to say, I know it's not rendered, but give me something to work with here. And so it's making some assumptions based on the unspecified parameters I pass in. So you take that for what it is. Your numbers might be wrong from what it actually gets drawn, but it's good enough for us to actually uh, manipulate it. Uh, so in the case of the tab bar, it's going to take the full width of the screen and it's going to have a certain height. So I'm able to say, okay, let's work with that. Let's adjust the margin of our layout and push it up 50% of that, uh, of the height of that control. So now it's, uh, it's, it's you know, it's overlapping the, the content and the tab bar. And all we do is we apply that and we just clean up our shell overlay in case there's anything there, and we, we add it. And everything's going to be able, for Android, everything's going to be rendered. So that was a lot of code to go through. Question. In the um, XML view that you did, you mentioned that you had the original shell code there as well. Yeah, so. Is that necessary to have that linear layout there? Yes, yes. So this linear layout is absolutely necessary. So it's not like uh, class inheritance where I get to say, I want to override this one piece. I need to pretty much carbon copy it. So uh, there, thank you for asking this question. I'm just going to repeat it one more time for anyone that didn't hear it. So do you need to have this part of our layout inside of our XML layout that we've kind of overrode what Xamarin platform is doing? And is, 
Yes, because we're 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 gonna uh, what's actually happening inside of your your app package is it's taking this layout file and pasting it over, completely overwriting that file. So there is no class level inheritance or anything to say. I just want to add this little thing. So what's the downside of this? If this code changes on the platform, you got to go and grab it and put it back in. Um, so there there is some some downsides to, to this technique, but this. Um, I had a conversation with the guys that worked on Shell, and they said this was the extension point that they built into the platform so we can create our own customization on how Shell is laid out. So in this example, is any of the linear layer actually being rendered? At all? Oh, yes. It is. Okay, yes, right. yes, yes. So the, the bottom navigation view right here, that's your tab bar. Uh, oh, right, okay. Gotcha. Uh, and then you know, the frame layer there, that's your content area. So what I did here was... Uh, and. And I'm not the best at platform specific code. I like working in shared libraries. But what I found was it was very difficult inside of a linear layout to grab a control. Because originally I was like, okay, we got a linear layout. Let me add another item to it. Perfect. It's underneath the tab bar. Let's see what I can do to, to, to move it around and, and change the other things. And it, just, it just wasn't working. So uh, frame layout was a lot easier to accomplish that. So that's why I wrapped everything inside of the frame layout. And then I just bolted on another frame layout at the bottom that I could do whatever I wanted to do with it. Uh, I'm sure there's, uh, with programming, you know, there's a hundred ways to solve any one problem, so I'm sure there's another way to do it. Uh, but this is the way, this is the way I did it, and again, this overwrites everything that is in that, uh, that XML file, that layout file. So if it changes, if they change it for whatever reason, you're going to have to change it if you want those new features. Uh, all right, any other questions before I continue? All right, cool. So now we were just looking at our on image click function, right? So up there, we got our image button. We say, hey, when the user clicks on it, I want to do a thing. So let's go do the thing. And what we're going to do is I should have a shell item. And we're going to cheat here because I couldn't find an easier way to do this. Uh, we're just going to grab our navigation, and I'm just going to push our page on. So we had our large tab, and our large tab has a page. And the, the caveat to this is I couldn't figure out an easy way to use the content template the same way our app shell was working. So if we take a look back, a little disclaimer here, I really don't know everything. I'm just making this up as I go, <laughs> but for we have content templates, right? And I wanted to try leveraging this technique, but I couldn't really figure it out. If someone figures that out, please submit a pull request to the repo that you guys are going to get linked to so we can all do it that way. So I just created a page, and easy enough, I got access to our navigation control and I can add it on. Um, so that's why, we did, that's why we had to write this code the way we did down here. And what's going to happen now when we run the app, we click the button, it's going to push the page on. So it looks like everything is good here. Um, all right, so let's let's try running it. And oh, am I hacking it? Are you sure you went over it? Oh, yes. Yes. Oh, there's, what did I break? Do you have to return the layout there? Uh, down here? No, I don't have to return the layout because we are because we have a, a reference to our our layout up here. Oh, oh, right here. Yes, you are absolutely right. Thank you. I did not return the layout. That's probably what the error was. Let's try that again. We run through these a hundred times and I still go off script. All right, there is another error. Let's figure out what went wrong here. Uh, my shell item render is public, should be declared. If oh, that's Java code. You don't see that very often. Visual Studio is angry at me. Let's um, let's restart Visual Studio. That usually fixes that problem. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it crashed earlier during the demo, so that's probably why. Still yelling at me for that same thing. Oh no, that is not cool. I promise you, this works. 
Let's try cleaning our Android project. While that's building, any other questions not about the, the build error? Um, yes. What, why would I use a shell compared to Xamarin or like what's the mo ma main motivation? I, I understand that it makes it easier to make a quick application uh, for navigation, but like long term, does it look like a smart um, so I like it because I don't need to, I don't need to fight the stack. So it's very, very easy to get set up. It's very organized with every, with how the, you know, the tabs are laid out, the flyouts laid out. Uh, one of the problems that I've ran into in the past, and this, again, my opinion, everyone's got one, yours might be different, take it for what it is, is when you work on teams, whether it's in-house or distributed, you have a wide range of skill sets. You got somebody that's usually your lead engineer that's been doing stuff for a long time. You got your juniors and your mid-levels. You want something that is gonna work, of course, but you want something that's maintainable by anyone on the team. So I look at solving these problems, not is it necessarily the, the absolute best perfect, you know, pie in the sky solution, but can I go and give this to my most junior guy on the team when I'm um, when I leave the company or when I'm on vacation for a couple of weeks, and will they still be able to, to iterate on it? And that sh shell is able, it's very simple to use, very easy to use. There's no real, I found no real complexity from working as a Xamarin Forms developer. When you get into the actual customization, this stuff's hard. I'm not, don't let me lie to you and say this stuff is easy. This stuff is very difficult to, to do. We've written a lot of code so far. But at the top level of it, it's very simple. And that's why I really like Shell, is how simple it is. All right. Um, so we got nothing here. I forgot to add it to the actual layout. We wrote all the code, but we didn't add it. So let's go do that. It builds, though, so that's good. Um, so we need to say um, set up large tab. Perfect. And I got a giant if block that I throw above it. So let's go grab that. It's right here. All right. So, no, it's not a to do. I call it something different when I was playing with it earlier. But it's a my tab bar. Oops. I'll call that uh, my tab bar. And my tab bar. Perfect. Okay. So all we want to say is this method can get fired for, for each tab. So let's just say I want to make sure our tab bar is my tab bar, and I want to make sure we have a large tab. Because if you don't have a large tab, why are we going to try and render something? You, your application is just going to bark at you, and you're going to be angry pulling all your hair out. So we just want to do that check. And then we could set up large tab, and we have our references to you know, our bottom view and our shell overlay. So we can just add stuff to that. We don't need to return anything back. So now, when I run the app, it's going to work. Got my fingers crossed here. Perfect. Big green plus button. I already added this ahead of time, so we didn't need to mess with it. But this is what I was talking about earlier. So now we're able to have this giant button over here, and it's kind of over the tab bar, kind of over the content page. It's a very popular style that I've seen on a lot of designs and, and apps. Um, and if we head over to the about page, it stays there. Um, and if we uh, had more items underneath, it would be on top of everything. And that's what all that code does. And that's how you customize it for, for Android. Uh, so before we jump into iOS, we're going to go through iOS very fast because we got like 15 minutes on my watch. But it's much simpler. It's much easier to do iOS. Any questions on anything I just did on Android? No? All right. Let's move into iOS. So for iOS, we're going to set it up pretty much the same way. There's going to be a renderers folder. Let's go create that. Did I have the right, uh, the right thing there? No, I was not. I want to be over here. And we're going to create the same thing. We're going to create my shell renderer for, for iOS. And 
where we're going to use that to orchestrate everything that's going on. So we'll say my shell render, and that's going to inherit from shell render. And I think we don't need to have a special constructor like Android. No, we don't. All right. And then at the top of any render, we say export, right? So we're going to say assembly, export renderer, plug in our namespaces, and it's type of shell. And we want to have it use our shell renderer. Make sure that we get all our namespaces in there. All right. So now everything's wired up. We got our shell renderer for iOS. It's going to orchestrate how iOS is going to work. So we're not going to use the shell item renderer for iOS. We're going to use a different render. So I'm going to say override not in the class. That would help. Override uh, safe create nav bar appearance tracker. That's what we want, right? Let me double check my notes. iOS. Yes. Okay. Took me a look over here because I need to copy over some code. So when I was going through and doing this, um, I really had no idea I was going to make this work up until the other week. Uh, there might be a better way to do this, but the the base class for shell renderer. Uh, I needed to, if I said, you know, base.create navbar tracker, it was going to create the, the the platform version of the navbar tracker. So the extension point wasn't really as good as I wanted it to be. There might be a better way to extend this, but the way that I ended up doing it is I took the little bit of code that was already in the base implementation, which is what we see here, but um, and I updated it for, for our purposes. And then um, instead of calling the base implementation, I'm going to say I want to use our version. So our version, uh, we're going to create that right now. Let me make sure I get my names right. It is uh, a my safe shell item appearance tracker. That. And let me make sure I can. Right, okay. I thought I broke down the wrong thing there. Okay. So this is going to inherit from the, there should be a safe shell tab bar appearance tracker. Let's go and inherit from that. And I don't think there's a default. Nope. Okay. So all we're going to do here is, what do we do on Android? We just newed up our, our render. So we're going to do the same thing here. So we're going to say, okay, new. For our tracker. I don't think I need to pass anything. Yes, I do. I need, I need to pass the tab bar into it. Uh, so we'll go and pass our tab bar in. And we need to create a constructor for that. So it needs to take in our tab bar. So if we come back over here, we'll say public my save. Didn't Dave say earlier when you do these live coding things, your fingers aren't good at typing? Okay, that's true. So I'll say my tab bar, and we'll pass that in. All right, cool. So how does all of this stuff work? Uh, I got a lot of code that I wrote for, well, not a lot, it's not really as much as we did for Android. So I'm just going to copy it over in bits and pieces, and we're going to talk about it. And I'll try not to run out of time. I'm still good on time, right? All right. So we'll just paste that in over here. So uh, the goal here is on iOS, I want to do kind of the same thing. I want to create an image button and I want to position that on the screen. So what we're going to do is we're going to do that with the uh, the, U, the, little pop -up, the UI button controller. So once we initialize it, I can grab this bit of code here and plug it in. And again, this is one of those parts where there wasn't really that great of an extension point. So I'm going to 
Harass the Microsoft guy that's here to see what I can do about creating a GitHub issue for this. So I had to do this really dangerous thing. You, you shouldn't really do that, but for this, I had to put new in front of my method. But I wanted to use everything from the base class, but I didn't want to use the reset appearance. I wanted to use my reset appearance so I can draw stuff. Um, I said at the beginning of this demo, I'm not an iOS guy. I get by, so this might be my version of getting by, but this is how I did it. Uh, your way might be, your mileage might differ. Uh, so inside the reset appearance, we have kind of similar code to what we did on Android. You know, I make sure that we got our tab bar created, and then I start building up our control, and I add, and that's it. So uh, let me just add in our namespaces here. Uh, so right here, we're positioning it. So if I slide over here, this is just some fancy numbers to go with where we want it to be positioned on the screen, you know, centered, off center of that tab bar. We grab our image and we plug that into our button right here and then we create an event handler so when someone touches on inside that button we can go do a thing so let's go create the uh, the method for that okay. I don't see context, but there we go generate method perfect and I should have access to a shell item maybe no I don't have access to a shell item but I have access to a tab bar which has a shell item. Has, does this have navigation? It's my navigation. Yes, it has navigation. Perfect. And then I could say my tab bar. We got our large tab from earlier, and I can say page. Okay. So now when we tap inside of it, it'll navigate to a page. Uh, we look back at our, our app shell. Remember, we defined that when someone presses that button, it's going to go to the about page for us. So it goes, like I said, it was a little bit simpler for, for iOS. So now if we went and ran this, and we pop over to my iOS simulator. Uh-oh, there's build error. Why do I always have build errors when I do this in front of people? Return type must be... Oh, I need to do. Is that what I named it? Let's copy that. My show. What did I write down in my notes? Oh, there's an interface I forgot. Let's see, this is why I wrote everything down because this. Again, this stuff is not simple. But I hope this is making it easier for you to think about doing stuff for your own projects. Now if you run it, still get errors. I did, I just did that. You know? So what's in my shell tab uh, I think I know what's wrong. Our names don't match up here. That should work. Perfect. The build succeeded. And with a little bit of luck, I have a tab bar there. Perfect. <laughs> As I struggle through this. Um, but, finish up the demo here. I can come here and I can click Add. And it brings up the about page, just like we had. Um, and same thing should happen for Android. So if we go and run the Android one one more time. And so that was a lot of code to do that. It's kind of complicated to do shell customization, but the extension points are there. So if I hit add, that opens up. The whole point of this demo was not to show you how to just build that, that one little I hit the back button here. It wasn't to show you how to build this. It was to give you a deep understanding of how Shell is built as far as extension points go. Using this exact same technique, I wrote an implementation that allowed me to create a custom footer in the, the Shell flyout. Using the same technique, you can do anything you want to Shell. To shell once you understand that you use a shell renderer as your orchestrator and then you create renderers from there to say, 
give me a new Andrew renderer to do whatever Andrew wants. And that's, that's really the point of this, this demo. So the, I wanted to get us to this point, so we had something pretty to look at at the end. Well, I hope everyone was able to, to take something away from this. Again, this is not something I wanted you to say, oh, that's super easy, I can go and do that. This is something that's difficult, but you should be able to go and look up some of the blogs that are out there and be able to figure it out. Um, so go back to my slide deck where I can say, if you want access to my slides, code sample, a blog I wrote on doing this, you can go to my website. Um, and you'll be able to get all that stuff there. If you uh, can't find it for whatever reason, find me on Twitter, or GitHub, or email, or, or come to the States and see me. Uh, <laughs> we'll hang out, it'll be fun. Any questions? Any any tomatoes you want to throw at me? Yes? Is this a kind of orchestrator kind of setup? Is this the first kind of Xamarin control that uses this kind of style of custom rendering, or is there other ones? That um, so. Kind of this is, as far as Xamarin Shell goes, I don't know of anyone that's been customizing it. When I talked to it, the Xamarin team, they told me that these were the extension points that they built into the platform. But as far as building renderers, this is a similar technique of how you would build uh, your custom label, custom button, but with, with extra steps. And just one maybe slightly maybe unrelated question on customization. I've kind of like read a little bit around this topic with the Shell and yeah, so I'm on the project I'm working on right now. I'm using Shell with Prism Library. Uh, the uh, the navigation model does does not work uh, as of right now. Seven one, I think I'm using. I think they just came out seven two. Um, but. As far as right, I know, the Xamarin team is currently working on fixes to make uh, Shell work better with the different MVVM frameworks out there. But for me, the big, the big uh, benefit of using an MVVM library like Prism is I get uh, the view model locator and dependency injection. So that's the, that stuff still works with Shell. So are you using purely that from Prism and using Shell for your navigation stack? Um, or you scrap this navigation from Shell. I'm doing a little bit of a custom yeah, approach. Yeah, okay. So a little bit of both. I'm using kind of together. It, it requires a little bit of tinkering, but Shell's still brand new. I mean, it's production ready, but there's there's still a lot of improvements, and I I see all the people logging the GitHub issues on what can be improved on on that model. Sure. Any other questions? No. Well, if you're too nervous, you can come find me. I'm more than happy to talk about stuff. Thanks for. Uh, Thanks for paying attention. I hope uh, everyone was able to get something out of this.